Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and this is a microprocessor. This is a product of the 70s that actually made your modern computing possible. This little component is found in almost anything you can imagine, and it's a wonderful little device that propels our future forward. And it's in this video series that I'm going to take you through the basics of this, not just how it works and what all the pins mean, but actually how to build one yourself. Because if you understand how these things work, you can understand how to program them more efficiently and become a better engineer. So I'm going to be using a green board for this video. I like a green board more because the chalk just sounds so much nicer on the surface. And I think it also may let you look at my face a little bit more because I'm concerned about that. Okay. So a computer is basically, I'm being very rough about this, it's a CPU, that's your central processing unit, and it has two data buses on it. You've got the data bus and the address bus. So data is what the CPU goes out and gets and is returned to, and the address is where it goes to get that data. Those are both connected to a piece of material called the I.O. bus. And the I.O. bus connects the CPU through external circuitry to memory and peripherals. So your memory is actually where the program is stored. So this is RAM. And your peripherals are like your mouses, your keyboards, any way you communicate with the computer. And so this is just basically how it works. Now for these videos, we're going to start by taking a look at what's actually going on inside the CPU. Then we're going to slowly work our way out, because this is, without a doubt, the most complicated thing to deal with. It's taken engineers decades to get it right, and we're still working on it today. Okay, so I think I'll use a time lapse for this. So here we have a very oversimplified version of how a CPU works. It starts with a program counter. The program counter's job okay, is to receive the clock signal. It's the up, down, up, down, cycle through. It's to count how far along in the program it is, which then sends where it is to the instruction fetcher, which puts an address onto the address bus, which then goes out to your I.O. bus and gets something back. So normally, without um, an I.O. bus, this would just be connected to your memory unit. And this would go out, get, it would send an address to the memory unit, which would then send back data to the instruction decoder. Now, the instruction decoder's job is sort of like the CPU of the CPU. It's what actually makes the decisions for the unit. So it sends data to everything else. It'll send data to, well, other components. 
This is the ALU. So the ALU, that's the arithmetic and logic unit, is responsible for the math and logic operations, the arithmetic and logic. Your basic CPU, the one we're going to be using for this video, the one we're going to build for this video, has it can actually only add and subtract. Those are the only math functions it can do. It can compare two bits of data, and it can do. It'll be able to make decisions, jump, that sort of thing. The CPU registers. Uh, it's like the memory unit for the CPU. That's not separate from it. This stores data coming from the ALU. So the output from an ALU will go to the CPU register. The input for the ALU will go to the CPU register. The stack pointer will go be in here. The uh, control register, the memory that says, oh, you've divided by zero, or you've subtracted a number less than zero, so you have a negative number, or there was an interrupt. That is all stored in here, and it's all to be parsed out. So this is sort of the center, so everything's connected to it, and it all relates. So this is your basic CPU.